I'm just that. Let's say, um, just a minute. I'll just do this. I'll see this. I'll show from the beginning. Here it is. Okay, fantastic. Okay, this is the painting I was showing to them. I'm so to, as a provocation, but I didn't know who the Sita was. I 20 years ago, I wasn't interested about this topic. See, a student of mine who was of a Cuban of um, a Cuban of African origin said to me, Carmen, do you think? Ask me, do you think there were black people in Spain in that period? And I was completely gobsmacked. I said, I have no idea. I, I, I'm not equipped to, re, to reply, to give you any answer to that. But what happens after that is I became obsessed about this question and I became obsessed about the sitter of the painting. And I started investigating who was Juan de Pareja. Then I found out he was an enslaved assistant of Diego Velázquez. He did, he have a, a, his own career as a painter. He knew how to write and read. He, you know, he signed documents on behalf of Velázquez. Okay, I'm, I'm going to write, I'm going to tell you a bit more later. But anyway, I found out the, this, the, about this, the Sita, the Sita experience. So then I decided to write this book in order to contextualize this painting. First of all, to actually to rescue or to address the historical amnesia about the, the African presence in Spain during this time. Secondly, to, to address, as Pierre said in the introduction, the emergence of the slave subject and the emancipatory subject. Okay, and, and this is this is the the main aim and the and the clear aim because there are other aims in between. So let's see. These these are the 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 chapters that I written, six chapters, and I choose a thread for my book because I it was not my intention to write a survey of, of depictions of black people. I didn't and didn't intend to write uh, you know a kind of um, about to, to, to actually build up exclusively on black people. I wanted to, to actually study the, the African presence in Spain from a specific angle, from an, an angle that could uh, lead me lead me closer, as closer as possible to the voice and to the eyes and to the experience of the, the African people in Spain. This is what I wanted to do. I'm so, uh, in one of these, uh, in one of the things that I was reading at the time, the, the, the book, The Black Renaissance by Lowe and Earl, I found out the reference of black, black Bahimam. In Spanish, it's, it would be this, um, um, it would be black Bahiman, it would, aunque somos gentes, aunque somos negros, somos gentes. Okay, I choose this black Bahiman and I will explain that. In the first, the first, the first chapter is the explanation or, or the actually the origin of the African opera that was found in, 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 in poems. It was it was appropriated by by the, the literary the literary elite, the literary elite in Spain. And it was found in the Hispanic world. We saw Juana Inés de la Cruz, et cetera, et cetera. But also in the recent poems found, uh, founded in 2004 by a group of, uh, uh, by a group of uh, historians or, or that, that studied the, the villancicos or the black carols. So black by human doesn't mean, doesn't mean uh, that black people didn't know they were not human. Obviously they knew they were human. This Afro-Hispanic um, proverb was addressed to the slave masters for them to understand that although they were considered, for the, the enslaved people, although they were considered objects to be sold and to be, um, to be bought, they consider themselves human because they have a soul. This is in practice what, what it stands for, okay? So in the Black by, by the first chapter, um, I, I actually work about the workings, started working about the concept of the book, okay? So 
we, we have this image that you already know about, you know, Sandoval 1947, and in the top of the of this drawing, you see the baptism of the African people. And there are no African people to be seen in, this, in these images because baptisms, the, trans, the transformative powers of baptisms uh, actually make the, 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 the African body turned into an European body, into a white body, okay? So this is how it is already depicted in 1647 here. Now, I actually started with the definitions by the lexicographer who is a black person according to him, who is a slave according to him, et cetera, et cetera. And then I started building up my concepts um, and framework from this. Now, this is Negro, this is a black person from Ethiopia. Although we know, we know that Ethiopia is a concept, it's a metaphorical concept of, of black Christians. It's not really necessarily a, a geographical reference in that period, okay? But that was one, and the other one was Guinea, which is not here in, in the in the in the definitions by Sebastian de Covarrubias. And this is the major thing: although black, we are human, and no one should be despised. Aunque negros gente somos, okay? This is what it is. So, also there was another lexicographer, Gonzalo Correas, who actually reported and claimed and recorded this. Of a black, we are people and we have a soul. And that is the key point. The soul is the key point of my whole book. Even the cover of my book, the white, the, the, the cast, has to do with the sense of, of a spiritual equality via the world of the soul. It's, it's the only place in which black people from different origins and different and different ethnicities were equal to the Spaniards and people who lived in the, in, in, in Iberia, in the you know in the crowns of Aragon and, and Castile. So this the, this this spiritual equality is the absolute key of my book, right? So in one of the poems, I didn't I didn't bring all the poems because there are too many, but for me the key one is this that is in your screen. Although we are a nation, no people since we eat people now, we are great folk of the fleas. And it's a reference, it's believed to be a reference. They can be black from North Africa, Muslim blacks, whatever, and they, these are referring to themselves. Low people and black is the perception that white people have of them and said, since we eat the little lamb, it could be referring to the Muslim practices. It could be referring to the, the host in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Catholic mass. But it says we are great folk of the fleece, of the golden fleece, okay? It could be referring to the little lamb in the golden fleece, as we can see here. So they, they actually write that they're equal to the king and equal to the nobility and equal to all Christian people in Spain through 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 Christianity in that spiritual realm, right? So, and another prejudice they have to actually uh, um, fight for um, 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 and actually go against that is we are black, we do not stain others. We are men, we got souls. As you know, I don't know if you know, but one of the most typical names that black people Black men have was tisnado, stain. Okay. So there was the perception that the blackness of the skin would actually stain other people who are not black, right? Well, this is the major things I'm, I'm trying to do since I have to talk. So the second, in the second, in the second chapter, I concentrate what is human about slavery, and I concentrate in the thought of theologians, jurists, um, and intellectuals on on slavery because, as you know, slavery has never been condemned by the church or by the or by the empire, right? And right, if you think about the abolition of it's the indigenous slavery of Native American slavery was 1542, and even abolition of slavery in the in the in the Canaries in the Canaries was in 1542, right? But 
but the, the, the abolition of Africans was much later and it hasn't been completed until now in Spain. What we know as a nation state in Spain. Okay, only in Cuba and Brazil in the 19th century. So what is human about slavery? This is what I'm trying, one of the things I'm, I was trying to defeat was or to, to actually um, rejecting was the idea, the, the, the idea in, in, the, in history that Spanish slavery was more human than English and British and Dutch slavery, et cetera, et cetera, because of Christianity. I totally reject this because the slavery for me it has been, it was, and it is a crime against humanity. So there is no, no absolute, no comparison of what system of slavery is more human than another. For me, they are all disastrously inhuman. Um, so this is what I wanted to say about here. So in fact, here, the fact we're building up who is a black person, who, how, how is a black person thought or, or being narrated in Spain in that moment. The enslaved of, of African descent, because they were enslaved people, white enslaved people that they were in Spain and carry on being in Spain through the practices of the Mediterranean slavery. Okay, this is what I'm saying that, that actually coexisted with the transatlantic slavery that started with the Portuguese and the Spanish. Okay, so um, the, the position of the enslaved of, of African origin was a paradox. A, a contradiction that it could never be solved, not even from the historic point of view. Black slaves were commodities who were sold and bought in auctions and at the same time were children of God. So these, these things are completely in contradiction, but they, they have to live with this concept inside themselves. So, and, and the, the, as you see, the attention and, and, the, and the aim of the empire of baptizing, baptizing black people has a long history because they have the Moors and the Jews who were, have different stages, um, through different stages of being baptized from, from proposals to, to enforcement. Okay, so this is, and, and fantastic was to find out that the, uh, the, the, the Pedro Vaca de Castro y Quiñones, the, the Archbishop of, of Seville, actually decided to have a um, treatise on, um, about the instruction for remedying and ensure that none of the black is lack, lacking baptism. But this is not addressed to Latin American people or, or to Native American in, in, in colonial time as people would would assume that was specifically targeted to Africans in the crowns of Aragon and Castile. Okay, that is really interesting. And then the obsession of whitening the soul, the obsession of the whitening the soul, the soul is white, is pure. And the obsession of whitening is the obsession of the spiritual equality, it's the, the color of the soul. And here in the mosque, Cathedral of Cordoba is a remarkable. Um, painted altarpiece unique in, in the history of altarpieces, which is my main first love, yes, in my, my PhD uh, on altarpieces. Uh, you can see it's painted the whole thing and the whole iconographic program is 18th century, but I just you as, a, as, a, as an example, the whole iconographical program is based on the whitening of the soul of the African man through baptism. And everything is connected to water, metaphors of water, um, um, purification. So wash me and I shall be whiter than snow is this written words bringing for, not coming from the mouth of the recently uh, baptized eunuch, right? So this is what I explored. And then I explored the, the, the only space that was offered to black people for them to be themselves and for them to organize a sense of solidarity and, 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 and connection, right? Which is the black confraternities. Black confraternities were created by the Catholic monarchs via their own, um, their own agent, their own, their own servant, their own slave who was from Africa and belonged to nobility, the African nobility. 
And in fact, in Seville, there was a street, I think they just, just changed the name of the street, El Conde Negro, which refers to Juan, Valladolid, Juan de Valladolid. I said, and this is actually, um, well, this is the thing. So the, the, this is how the black, black confraternities were created by the, black, the, the Catholic monarchs to get rid of, of the Africans from the public space. It was a double sword and actually to, to keep them together. But this was absolutely fantastic for the black communities where they decided to, 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 um, to vote or to nominate their own representative uh, in be, to, to actually represent them in, 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 the, in the inquisition they have problems with the archbishop, etc. Right? So uh, here is Juan de Valladolid, sorry, this is what I should have put it. And here is the, the nomination of Juan de Valladolid um, as, as the guy who is in charge of everything of the black fraternities. So I dedicate quite a lot, a lot of time in the, in, the, in the structure and the formation of black fraternities as centers of solidarity and resistance. Okay, so this is one thing. Um, then this is this is what we know about from the from the angle of black but human. Then the major thing is to understand the painting, the portrait of Juan de Pareja. You have to understand what was the visual culture in Spain at that, in that period, in early modern Spain, but vis-a-vis -vis the workings of slavery. So I concentrated on on this, on this, this studied other um, by previous um, art historians like Paul Capran uh, mm -hmm. about the baptism, about, about the adoration of the Magi and the resistance of including the black Magos in depictions of that sort in Spain. And um, also there were, also there were uh, actually, there were no, to my surprise, I couldn't find any portrait of enslaves with the monarchy and the nobility as in the rest of Europe. I couldn't find anything vis-a-vis -vis the iconography of slavery. So I say, where on earth am I going to find the picture of black people in this, in the visual, in the visual culture, in the archive that we are offered, in the, in the places that we have? So I, I thought. If this, if, if, if uh, actually baptism is so important, if baptism is the passport, passport for enslaved people to be part of this empire, I should go to religious compositions, okay? So this is what I've, I've been exploring. Um, because I had an idea that I will tell you soon, um, what happens when you incorporate a black subject in the canon of portraiture, what's happened when you incorporate a black subject in, in religious composition? What happens to the genre, to the nature of the genre? And so this problematization between visual culture and slavery is what I try to address. And this is what is my passion really, because it, things changed completely. Okay. So um, it's, it's, we are in the 17th century, I'm doing from the, the 1480 to, to the 1700. Okay, I'll do with the Tridentine, the Tridentine, um, you know, uh, um, edicts, et cetera, et cetera, but also about the black city, black city and the desire of the bishops to create um, black saints. The first black saint in Europe is San Benedict of Palermo, right? In fact, the king of Spain brings the relics, the relics of San Benedict of Palermo to, to, Spain, to Spain and creates a, a massive, massively popular cult of San Benedict of Palermo. And in the confraternity, black confraternities, they consider this saint as their own saint, although he, he doesn't become a saint until much later, centuries later. Okay, and here you have just a, just a little bit of a, a little sentence he said, although you are black, it will come, time will come when you are beautiful, handsome, and white. This is by Lope de Vega, okay? This references. And just, then there is a, quite a lot of the, quite a lot of the pictures of Ethiopian saints, of Saint Iphigenia and Saint S. Elispam, 
Okay, so in Antequera. This is Antequera where Pareja was born, okay, in the city of Antequera. So these depictions are already there. Oh, later. So this is just examples of this of this of this chapter in which the, the first the first evacuated black confraternity in Seville called um, in a very patronizing way Los Negritos, which is abominable. Abominable. It's still there in the same place where it was created. Okay, and you can still see them and uh, I want to see this this uh, these icons, these images, um, we have these uh, examples of Nuestra Señora Los Angeles, and a commission from a very important artist, a, a sculptor Andres de Ocampo, by them. Processions, so with, the, with the, being part of the confraternity means that they could join processions in festi festivities, um, Easter, um, um, Corpus Christi, which was the most important one. Um, this is one of the examples no, no of Seville, but Valladolid is a procession that was also, you know, going in the streets. Now, the most interesting thing for me was the discovery of the discovery of the legal case against the, the members of members members of the Black Confraternity in Seville by a Cardinal Don Fernando Niño de Guevara, painted by Alberto. Okay, he actually is incredibly revealing the way they, the way they treat black people and the way they conceive uh, the nature of black people. And they, they, they forbade the, the, the members of the combatant to actually walk on the streets where white people live. This is one of the examples that I'm giving you. So if you don't call this racism, I don't know what you call it. It's, it's an ethnic prejudice. It's a kind of, um, well, we can discuss this later. Okay? Let me just finish, otherwise I'm going to go over it. Okay, so who is the iconography of slavery then in Spain? If there is no portraits, I cannot find anything, I do, but there is. It's, the, the, the iconography of slavery is, the presence of the attribute of the chain or the cola or the fetters that signal the audience that is looking at the, at the work of art, signals that this person eh, does not have any freedom at all. This is a slave, an enslaved person. Um, there are not, I, I couldn't find anything of, of a black person enslaved, but I could find white people enslaved, white people. And these are, who were actually enslaved by the Muslims in North Africa. These are the representation of this sort, there are and quite a lot. And this is a fantastic one in which St. Peter Nolasco, the founder of the Mercedarians, this is this kind of um, this Mercedarians and Trinitarians were created in medieval times to actually uh, liberate Spanish, uh, Christian Spaniards like Cervantes, for instance from slavery in the north of Africa. So you have here, the African mom is not a slave, it's a slave owner. And he's selling, he's, he's exchanging, he's giving freedom to, this, to his captives in, 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 as an interchange for gold. Now, in the chapter four, I actually concentrate on the workings of slavery, the brutality of slavery the violence of the appropriation of the, of the, 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 the black body. So this, this, as I said, there is not the depiction, there are not depictions of the, the iconography of slavery by Spanish artists, but there are two cases that I, 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 I actually discuss in the book. One is by Christopher Pides in 1529, and the other one is by Joris Hufnagel in 1573. That means these are artists who belong to the Spanish territories in, in Europe, okay? And they are, they are given these, uh, these, uh, these commissions from the emperor and the queen, respectively. So you can see here how Christopher Pides recorded um, the presence of of African descendant enslaved in Castile, in Barcelona, and white enslaved, fulfilling their social functions. And what I do here is a kind of 
a new interpretation, a new interpretation of, of a fugitive. The fugitive, according to Spanish, to the Spanish law in that moment, is a criminal. It's a criminal that ended up, that would end up in the in the in the royal prison, and uh, um, um, sometimes in, in the Inquisition, um, sometimes they will suffer incredible punishment and the things that will suffer is mutilation of the limbs when they are caught. I don't see them, I don't interpret them as criminals, I interpret them as the resistance, the resistance to the inhumanity of slavery. These people are desperate to, to get out, of, to, you know, to escape from this absolute uh, inhumanity. And one of the, one of the, one of the, Objectives of Hamlet's way is to keep punishing them constantly for them not to escape and not lose their economic investment. So, um, and it's, it's interesting that I found, I also found that I make use of it, of these, the first legal treatise, medical legal treatise about how do you decide the price of a slave in the auctions, in slave mm -hmm. auctions. Um, so it's in very detail. I don't know how many pages I wrote. I found it in the Biblioteca Nacional by Juan Fragoso in 1575. And also I found it in the Manual of Conduct on how to treat your slave when your slave is, is a Christian. And you don't have to call this slave Jew or Muslim because you are offending, offending you know, the purity of, or the purity of uh, of blood principles or policies. So in here, this is Yuris Hufnagel, well, the view of the view that Elizabeth McGrath gave me a submission to study uh, ages ago. And, and I'm very grateful because this is special. Yuris Hufnagel well, depicts the two types, generally speaking, the two types of slave people in Spain at that time, the Ladino and the Bozal. Ladino is the, the assimilated enslaved a person who speaks the language, dressed like the owner, um, and, and is the one who goes with the conquistadores and the colonizers for the first time in Latin America, in, in colonial Latin America. And here you have, in the middle of the composition, in the view of Seville, there is on his own, isolated in the landscape, Surprise, surprise, why that, is he isolated? It's a question. Well, here he is. And in this precious and wonderful frame, I've put the frame that both Spain on the right hand side and New Spain, which is Mexico, on the left hand side. And they're meeting each other, meeting these two boats are meeting. I'm in the boat. Of the Hispania boat is the presence of, of two of two enslaved shackled together as property, as part of the wine, olive oil, part of the trade. They are just objects to be sold and to be and to be to be bought and to be sold. Okay. Here there is a, a, a kind of um, a detail. They're shackled together, they're, they're naked, and they're depicted like monkeys. And in fact, they are sold as animals, with animals. Um, um, jewelry um, um, furniture in, in, in the steps of the Cathedral of Seville and distributed as oranges or anything distributed all around Europe and in the in not only in Latin America but in Europe. Okay. Am I okay with the timing? Uh, five, ten minutes, Carmen. Okay, okay so I'm, I'll go I'll go quickly. Okay, this is that they were just to remind me, these are jewelry jewelry worn by men from the confraternities, the aristocratic confraternities created later at the beginning of the 18th century in Madrid, in which they call themselves slaves, slaves, and the brothers are slaves. And they, they have this, uh, they, they adopted the, the sign, the, the, um, the branding, the, the branded sign that most slaves have in the cheeks and in the body with S clavo. Okay, the S for Esclavo and the nail. Okay, so, okay, that's what. After that, I go to, is there any cast lower than blacks and slaves from Guinea? 
And I decided, to, I, I studied the, the appropriation and the, the appropriation of the black body and the violence of slavery, codified in a metaphorical way in the dream of, of the miracle of the black leg, in which you can see. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go here. There are several legends. We can talk about this if we want to later. But let's see this. But my main thing here is to study the shift between the original, the original iconography of the miracle of the black leg, in which the, the leg from a corpse, an Ethiopian corpse, in the background or in the right hand side of the painting, like in this 14th century painting in, in Santa Croce in, in Florence, um, right, becomes white when it is it, grafted by St. Cosmas and Damien to the ill person, okay? And, and it gives the, it gives both both the corpse and the and the white person gives the possibility to spread with the whole body, which is very important in medieval times. In Castile, there are three major cases in which the the departure from this iconography is radically different. And it can only be, be explained in the context of the workings of slavery. Because this actually um, this is in Palencia, and here, surprise, surprise, I didn't realize until much later, and it was Elizabeth McGrath who noticed this, I have to give her the, the, the things, the black person who is indifferently treated and mutilated alive is shackled with chains. So this is the iconography of slavery in Spain and is found in a religious composition, and that's very important. Right. So this is in the choir stall in Avila. Right, let's go. But um, the the latest, the, the last, the last uh, uh, chapter the most important moment is this exactly with the emergence of the slave subject and um, the emancipatory subject. Okay, so my whole thing and my whole book is the shift between the the um, stereotypical images of black enslaved um, the shift to the humanity of the enslaved. Because here, Velasquez is depicted as a human being, as a nobleman, and with his whole agency and looking at us fiercely. But he is still legally a slave for eight other months. Okay, eight other months, he's going to be given uh, his manumission, his freedom, and he has to be, uh, to comply the, the the wishes of the manumission document, which is a legal one, that he has to serve four years more to Velasquez in order to pay for his own freedom. Okay, this is the moment about the success of this painting had in Rome when it was exhibited, it was the most successful one. Um, and then I was lucky to have Palomino who dedicated extraordinarily dedicated a biography to Juan de Pareja and defined him as a mestizo breed and said he was of an old hue because he did see it was so new being a mestizo in Spain in that moment means means no a mestizo not the union between a Native American and a Spaniard it's an union between an African descent and the Spaniards, okay, or what it was called mulatto in that period. Okay. Um, the relationship, it was very special, the relationship between Velázquez and Pareja, so that the, I found this reference here and a letter of presentation in Venice where it said Diego Velázquez and a servant to whom much esteem is shown is coming to him. No, Pareja is, uh, Palomino actually, to quite a lot about the portraits that Pareja does is the best thing that he has done. And um, the religious compositions, there are 30 paintings that we know of him, um, but we, 20 are in unknown places that we have to find out where they are. 10 of them are roughly speaking the ones that we know of. This is, I never saw this painting, it's actually in the basement of the Prado and it's three meters long. Right. And this is the calling of St. Matthew that I did, a new interpretation. And um, it, it was fascinating to work about this. So you have to remember that in that time, in 
it's only it's only it's not long ago that the Muslims were expelled for good from the the Iberian and Iberian uh, Peninsula uh, by 1640. So it was very important for for Pareja to define himself as a Christian without any Muslim origin. Okay, because because. Um, um, enslaves of Muslim origins were not admitted inside the court, but he was at the court working with Pareja since 1634. So we have a, a document that said that. So, so it's very important to define himself because he was born in Antequera and almost certainly he became, he was uh, uh, originally from North Africa, which is mainly Muslim of Muslim origin. So. And also his plane in here, he's, um, he has a lot of resonance of Velazquez's work. Okay, I'm going to go very quickly on this. Okay, he is whitening himself. Why is he whitening himself? Why is he Europeanizing himself? Because he's choosing the religious moment, the religious moment. He is inside the religious event, not outside of the religious event. And this portrait is not an isolating self-portrait. If that was an isolating self-portrait, I would be talking about a different matter. I would be talking about rejection of his race and ethnicity. In this moment, it is not because it's, he is inserted in the vocation of St. Matthew, who is the apostle of Ethiopia, the first Christian nation, and where all the saints from the co-fraternities have their origin. Okay. He is he is identifying himself metaphorically, um, 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 symbolically, to to the biblical Ethiopians like Juan Latino did in the previous century. And there was a, a okay. Here you have the difference. He nevertheless he he has the template of 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 pareja. Oh, sorry, of Velasquez's idea of him. And goes further and depicts himself as an old Christian. If you, okay, if you see the old Christian is here. He's he's wearing a sword. Okay, he's declaring himself as a Christian, an old Christian, and he's saying, "I am not Spaniards. Old Christian Spaniards are not old Christians. They are new Christians. I am not a new Christian." I am an old Christian because I belong to the first Christian nation. I belong to Ethiopia, okay? And this, the Spaniards come much later. So if you think about the powers of the powers of transformation given by the, the baptism, whitens the soul and the body in visual terms and in, in metaphorical terms. And you can see in the X-rays of this painting here, right? That Parej, that Velázquez has already started the process of idealization and, and in the painting in the painting at the Met. Okay? So this idea of having an, of, of, of incorporating a, a black enslaved in a religious composition came from Velázquez. But whereas Velázquez keep the maid outside outside the religious composition, composition separated by a wall, Velázquez incorporates himself inside the composition and he is the only one who looked at the viewer and who introduced the viewer into the painting. He is the protagonist of his painting. He's the manifesto of his equality, feeling equal to everybody else's. Okay, if I have to finish, I have to finish. And I can go later and I can do more stuff. I think we should. Um, okay, 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 I finished. The things that can be done, we can talk about. All right. We should have the